Hey guys, Steve again, uh, video number two uh, of how to shave an hour off your Ironman time. So this is the analysis of the test that Dave put me through. Um, I'm a little embarrassed because my numbers have come down, but in saying that they are true numbers, not actually, um, not, not, not fake I should say, but it's um, probably more of a, a solid number than, than what the other test will reveal. So have a look through it, um, Dave explains what's going on with all my data um, and um, see how you go. But if you're interested in it, um, like I said, I'll put Dave's information in the comments below and yeah, feel free to drop him a line. Thanks guys, see you next time. I uh, thought I'd take the time to go through your um, metabolic profile report. Um, and if you look at this chart here, you'll notice there's tabs across the top um, and each one's got a different um, function. So the first one is body composition, the one we're in at the moment. And a lot of this information we put in on the or prior to your test. So your body weight on the day was 67.7 kilo, uh, kilos, uh, body height 168 centimeters. And from that, this um, predicted a BMI of 24 kilos per meter squared uh, and a body surface area of 1.77 meters squared. Uh, the body fat we put in from the scales again, uh, and that represents 16.4% uh, of uh, body mass, or 11.1 .1 kilos. Um, and from that, we uh, um, came up with a fat-free zone of 83.6% of body mass. This um, last thing, available glycogen, is based on your active muscle space, and um, as you can see, it's uh, works out at about 26%. Um, we know that um, a tapered athlete can probably hold about 20 grams of carbohydrate per kilo of muscle. Um, so this figure represents that by about 76% because obviously you weren't using all of your muscles used, uh, doing a cycle while you're predominantly using the legs. Um, if we go to the next tab, metabolic tab, sorry, metabolic capacities. Um, this chart is based on or, or is, uh, has three um, levels, um, recreational athlete, amateur athlete and professional athlete and your setting is recreational athlete because that's basically what you are um, and, um, and so some of your uh, readings may seem a little bit higher or, or lower depending on, on that um, control group. So in terms of VO2 max, you came up, up as medium, um, and uh, that was a 51.2 mils per minute per kilo. Um, your VLA max, um, although it appears on the low side, that's a good thing because you're an Ironman triathlete, uh, an endurance athlete, so we want that to be lower. Um, if you were, say, a Robbie McEwen, a sprinter, for instance, we'd expect you to be up closer to one. Um, and Jan Fredino would probably be around the three mark, 0.3. Um, so you're, you're pretty close to that, so that's not too bad. Anaerobic threshold uh, works out at 3.3 watts per kilo, which is pretty good, um, with an FTP of 220 watts. And your VO2 max uh, comes up at 79.4%, which 80% is, is pretty normal. That max, um, relative to um, body weight is 4.94 kilocals per hour per kilo um, and um, your carb max 2.6 watts per kilo is representative of the what did you be able to push when burning 90 grams of carbohydrate which is the, the maximum amount you can actually ingest. If we move over to the uh, next chart, um, we've got some uh, fancy looking graphs here. This top one is um, basically your uh, oxygen demand uh, during uh, exercise and, and anything below this uh, light blue line here in the white is uh, exercise with oxygen and anything above it, so any of the shading area is uh, energy produced by the glycolytic energy system. Interestingly, uh, where the lines start to divide, just there, that's, uh, I guess, um, where your fat max zone is. Talking of fat max, um, 
This um, green line here represents your fat combustion rate and, and it maxes out somewhere in this range. Uh, and so the green range or the green uh, stripe, it represents that. And that is typically where you would be racing an Ironman. <coughs> um, as opposed to the orangey red line, uh, which is your carbohydrate combustion rate. And as you um, increase in intensity, you'll notice that um, suddenly that takes off and suddenly the, um, the contribution of fat goes down to zero. This orange stripe here is representative of the, the maximum amount of carbohydrates you can actually ingest um, per hour, and it's 60 to 90 grams. Um, <coughs> This uh, top um, graph is interesting, particularly when we're um, setting training uh, programs. This um, uh, grey line here, is, uh, which is called lactate recovery, is actually your lactate combustion rate. And it, it suggests that around 144, I guess, you're, you're burning the maximum amount of lactate that you can. And if you look at the, the figures down here, um, it's around about 0.52 miles a minute. Conversely, on this side of the line, after running a threshold, you start to accumulate lactate quicker than you can burn it off. And, and so if I was to set you a VO2 max interval of say 260 watts, you can see if you again look down here, um, that you'd be burning about one millimole a minute. Um, so I know that if I uh, had you pedal at that wattage for three minutes, you'd um, accumulate about three millimoles, and then in terms of recovery, I'd need to have you sitting somewhere around here, um, burning off 0.52 millimoles a minute, um, and we want to probably take that down to about 75% uh, of that figure before we um, did our next repeat. Uh, moving along, we notice your, um, uh, I guess it's like a fingerprint uh, and it gives you an idea of what's good and what's bad. Uh, we've already talked about VO2 max, which is kind of medium for your um, um, control group. Um, relative to um, uh, your body weight, it, it comes down a little bit um, and that would increase if your body weight decre uh, decreased. VLA max fits right in here, we'd like to see it over there, but it's not too bad. Anaerobic threshold, 3.25 watts per kilo, um, which relates to an FTP of 220, um, and that, that represents 85%, sorry, 80% 80, 80 of your um, auto standard of your VO2 max. Um, for me, there's three areas that I look um, before prescribing your next program. One would be this, uh, i.e. your percentage of um, VO2 at FTP. The other would be this, uh, and the final one would be that. And for me, VO2 max is your low-hanging fruit, because if you can increase that, all of these other figures, including fat max and FTP, would come up. So FTP at the moment, is 79.4%. That percentage would stay the same or very similar, um, but it would be 79.4% of a higher VO2 max. So in my mind, that's probably where we need to head. <coughs> if we look at performance development, uh, because this is the first time you've actually done this test, you know, all the, uh, uh, the points that you uh, achieved are on the chart and hopefully you would see them moving in the right direction next time you test it. Um, the final thing this gives you is your training zones um, and they're probably a little bit different from the ones you're used to um, but you'll notice a, a spread and then a target which is basically halfway between them um, and um, interestingly you'll also get a, uh, if you're working in that training zone how many carbohydrates or grams of carbohydrate you're burning an hour uh, and which will inform fueling strategy when you're training, but also when you're racing. Okay, just bear with me a second. I'd like to show you the effect of um, increasing your VO2 max. Uh, so I created a virtual chart. Here we go. Just coming up. Um, 
and you can see straight away if we were to increase your VO2 max by five points, so, so from 51 to say 56, um, you would find that your FTP would suddenly go from 220 to about 245 watts per kilo, but more or at least as importantly, um, this fat max zone, which is here at the moment, would move um, to the right over here, which means that you'd be able to um, pedal a higher wattage with, um, but still using uh, or utilizing uh, the majority of uh, fats. So um, I think that's definitely the way we've got ahead, and um, hopefully, we can talk about that a little bit later on. That's it. Thanks, Steve. Okay, guys, so there you have it. Um, that was my results from the uh, from the test that, that Dave put us through. So the other gentleman in the in the uh, shop before was Neil. Uh, Neil and myself both did the test together, uh, <laughs> maybe to push each other a bit harder. But uh, yeah, so uh, the results came back, and as as you've seen, um, so we're talking FTP uh, for the bike and uh, relating it to taking some time off. Uh, my Ironman time. So with that that comparison part that Dave displayed in the last part of that uh, video uh, he mentioned that by gaining uh, five points in my in my VO2 would would deliver a five and a half hour ride um, over the port course. Um, so compared to my last numbers in, um, in 2019 my average power was 150 watts over the course so I just need to find the 20. So I think I, I think that's achievable with a bit of work. Uh, and as Dave outlined, uh, some more VO2 work to try and push those numbers up a little bit higher. Uh, also, probably lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> well, might be a bit hard since I'm only 67 kilos. So maybe it might be um, a little bit more gym. So I've incorporated that into my training plan. So gym twice a week, uh, concentrating on, on leg work. Uh, to try and build a little bit of uh, extra strength to try and push those pedals. Uh, so pretty much that's it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention too was the actual carbohydrate um, component there. Um, that that was probably another one that sort of surprised me as well. So that we'll, we'll take it and make a separate video together um, because there's a lot more involved in, in what um, what's there. So that's that's nutrition. Um, timing and how much carbohydrates across the actual bike and therefore the actual the run so that was the other half so the other half hour is to pick up in the run and that all comes back to nutrition but anyway I hope you enjoyed that part of it uh, so look forward to uh, video number three thanks guys